Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we'll be learning about how changing the learning rate of your optimizer changes your accuracy and your losses in a basic CNN. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll up to the top here. We have loaded our MNIST data in. This is in the previous video. We built a basic, very basic model, which we did in the previous video. You can see with an input layer, a convolutional pooling, convolutional pooling, flatten, and then we have our dense layer for our classification at the end there. Previously, we had Adam as our optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.01. However, in our results, we noticed that our uh, while our validate our, our loss steadily decreased over time, it started to increase at the very end. Our validation loss uh, bottomed out around the seventh epoch, even though we trained to the fifteenth. So in this video, we are first going to try this again, only with a loss that is 10 times smaller. And then we are going to be using what Keras calls a callback called reduce learning rate on plateau. And I'll be going over that API in just a couple of minutes. Changing your learning rate changes how far the stochastic gradient descent uh, changes over time. So if you have a very high learning rate, it will jump around a lot if you think of it, if you think that you have like a curve, a two dimensional curve, and your step, your learning rate is how far you move in the x direction, and your result, uh, your loss is what, you, what your y value is. Well, you might miss some minimums if you have a very high learning rate. You might jump from either side of a curve if you have like a parabola. But if you have a low learning rate, it's gonna very slowly dip into that minimum. However, if it's too low, we might get stuck in a local minima instead of the absolute minimum for our function. Reducing it by 10 is normal. You might even have up to four zeros. Um, and if you're doing very complex neural networks, you might be saving them off, reloading them back with different learning rates each time. So just to start here, we are going to um, hit enter here and run this cell. Now we're just gonna sit on this for a little bit and then I'll skip ahead. Uh, as we can see here, it'll take about 40 seconds to do this first training. And our accuracy is a bit lower to start off with than it was last time. So if we go back to the original one, our first epics accuracy ended around 92.5 and the validation accuracy of 97, which is pretty good. Uh, we do want them to be around each other. If the accuracy becomes much higher than the validation accuracy, that's uh, good evidence of overfitting. Or if your validation loss begins to increase while your other loss either flattens or decreases, that's another piece of evidence that you're overfitting. Overfitting is when your network is memorizing the data and not really learning the features, like generalizing the features as well. So uh, that will be one Thing that you really don't want if you're going to be using it in other applications, especially in industry or in real science, other than just playing around with networks like we are now. As we can see here, our accuracy is 85.5 compared to 92.5, so about 7% difference. And the validation accuracy is 98.07 compared to 97.93, so that is about the same. Our validation loss is about the same and our regular loss is a bit higher. Uh, one reason that the validation accuracy is so much higher is the training accuracy is built over the entire epic. So at the very beginning of that epic, it probably had a 10% accuracy if you look at the very first couple steps um, because it doesn't know what any of the features are for this data. So that had to build up over time and the validation accuracy is calculated after the fact after the entire training is done. So it's a better representation of what that epic did. So I am going to uh, skip ahead for you guys so you can see the end whenever all 15 epics are done and we can compare our results. As we can see now, our training is done with a final training accuracy of 99.75 and a validation of accuracy of 99.00, which is a bit higher than before, uh, which is good to know. And especially good to know is our validation loss before uh, being 0.085, now being 0.0433. So 
which is very similar to the training loss before, 0.0499, but our new uh, loss is 0 0.0072. So this shows that our network, the loss is a lot lower, which is great. Uh, one thing I did notice is it started to creep up again, but not as bad as last time. We're starting to creep up at the nine epic mark, uh, and we went from uh, 319 to 443. So, or 433, so a little over 0 0.01 increase. Before we went up from 0.624 to 0.085, so that was like a 0 0.02 increase over that time period. To do another test here, I'm going to add another 0 to our learning rate. Uh, I do want to restart our runtime. Uh, that way, the otherwise the network will still be saved under model and we'll be training not from scratch. We'd be training from our pre-trained uh, network there. So we need to do our imports. And then that, yep, and then we can rebuild our model. So let's go into a little more detail of what I was just saying, is we wanna recreate our model, otherwise the weights and the biases of that model and the structure is still saved in the memory of this Python instance. So if we started to train again, it would grab that last save state instead of starting with random weights, uh, which is really what we want for this comparison here. Um, another thing I'm gonna do here is I am going to take a screenshot. And if we need to do some uh, comparisons later, you know this won't disappear. So we've added a second. So initially we had 0 0.01 in our last video, then we just tried 0 0.001, now I'm gonna try three zeros. And uh, I'll skip ahead once more. So that training is now complete. As we can see, uh, our final validation accuracy is 98.46, which is below the 99% before, and our regular accuracy is 98.50, which is again below the 99%. So this is an example of our learning rate being too low. Uh, as we can see, our loss decrease, our validation loss and our normal loss decrease super slowly and then it bounced around here and then got out of a local minimum. So this is what happens when uh, your, your, your loss is too low. Um, you will end up getting into some sort of local minimum and you can't get out of it. Or you're, by the end of the number of epics that you're expecting, you're not where you expect it to be. Um, so that's why you need to find a balance of the, the learning rate that will work best for you. Uh, and now we are going to learn about a function called uh, reduce learning rate on plateau. Uh, we can create a, uh, well first I'm gonna take a screenshot of this too. So then we can add that for comparison if need be. Um, actually, there we go. Uh, we're gonna add this reduce uh, learning rate which is a keras function. It will be tf.keras.callbacks on tensorflow.keras.callbacks import reduce lr on plateau. So just so the imports are lined up with our system, uh, we can type this in. Um, so we're gonna create a variable Let's call reduce LR equals reduce learning rate on plateau. And uh, this function takes in a monitor value. Um, so what is it gonna be monitor monitoring? Uh, validation loss, validation accuracy. You could do val ACC for that, I believe. Uh, do you want it to monitor loss, a, a custom loss function that you are creating? Uh, you don't want to monitor your, your total accuracy or your training accuracy or your training loss. You can make it whatever you want or your, your validation accuracy. I think loss is a better example in this case. If we're doing non-classification and we're just doing some sort of uh, regression network, then you definitely will do the loss definitely will not have to think about whether you're doing accuracy or not. Uh, next is our factor. So factor is our learning rate 
times the factor is our new learning rate. So in our examples here, we first started with a 0 0.01, and then we did 0 0.001, and then three zeros. And we noticed that uh, three zeros was too much, but two zeros seemed pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this learning rate here 0.5, or two zeros is good and three zeros is too much. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, next is our patience. So patience is how uh, the number of epochs with no improvements after which the learning rate will be reduced. In our case, we'll make that two. As you can see, the default here is 10. So if our validation loss uh, no longer decreases for two whole epochs, uh, our uh, validation, our learning rate will be cut in half. So it's a good thing. Um, and then you can also set a verbosity mode. So if you are auto, I think is good for the mode. Um, the mode, if you're doing accuracy, you want it to be max. And if you're doing, uh, uh, accuracy you want to be max because once the monitor has stopped increasing, it will kick in if you're doing some loss, you want it to be minimum so it stops decreasing. But uh, we'll just do auto because it will know, oh, we're doing loss, we're gonna do the minimum. Uh, the next is the minimum delta. So threshold for measuring the new optimum. So this is saying what like what counts as a change. If it's less than 0 0.0001 of a decrease in our case, then that is considered stagnant, which I think is fair. Uh, you can make it, you can make this. So this is how sensitive the increase or decrease is in your case. Cooldown. Uh, so let's say you let's say it's two, and then it, you think it might take a couple epics for this new learning rate to start making a difference. You may want to uh, change the cooldown amount. So if there's a cooldown, it changes it. And if you set set the cooldown to two, it will train twice for two more epics before uh, this starts searching for a failed um, to see if it stops decreasing. And then finally, minimum learning rate zero. You can set that uh, to whatever you want, but we'll just go with these defaults here. So our monitor value, validation loss, and our, uh, let's see, validation loss and our factor. Um, I do want to set our patience to two. I think I just got rid of that accidentally. But uh, we are going to restart our runtime. And we will see how we improve. So we need to get our imports done, our loading the data, building the model, and then we are going to train. And I'll skip ahead. Oh. Da, 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 da. What did we do wrong? Positional auth, because we named monitor, we need to uh, set what these guys are. So this would be factor equals, and then patience equals. So this area is we had a positional argument uh, follows a keyword. So because we put a keyword first, the rest of them must all be keywords. Because when there's a keyword, it, uh, it, the orders can be, maybe be messed up. And now we're training and I'll be right back. Okay, so this training is done. And I did have to make two changes. I had to set a verbosity equal to one so we would get these printouts. And I had forgotten to put the callback in the fit function. So you put these callbacks, you can have a list of different callbacks here, uh, early stopping, all sorts of things, tensor board, um, and transfer a couple steps. Uh, we get our validation loss um, has a patience of two. And I guess it doesn't think the validation loss is decreasing, or actually it had increased here and this is still higher than the lowest uh, so then it lowers our learning rate to half of what it was before a couple more times increases again increases again so in this case we're actually our patience i believe is too low 
should bump it three, four, or five. This is just an example of how uh, that works. And in the end, our validation accuracy is worse than our uh, 0 0.001 or yeah, 0 0.001 example and uh, the original example uh, it is it was 0.987 so just slightly better um, than that one so this was an explanation on how uh, changing your learning rate and using a reduced learning rate on plateau will affect your training i hope you learned something if you have any comments put it in the comment section below if you like this video please like it and share it. Uh, thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time